Okay, you can go ahead and play it. You want a traditional wife, then be a traditional man. You cannot ask for stay-at-home wifey privileges if you don't have stay-at-home wifey money. You want me to clean the kitchen? I'm happy to clean the kitchen if I get to wake up at 10... I get to clean the kitchen, I get to go lounge by the pool, and then you come home at night. Like, sure, no problem. But if I'm waking up at the crack of dawn with you, we're both going to our two very demanding jobs, and then coming home, don't ask me for anything you're not willing to do. If you want a tradition... Is that it? Yeah. Um, I don't think she's actually really wrong. Like, I don't think she said anything wrong, but like... Bear in mind, this woman used men for dates for a two-year period so that she didn't have to buy groceries. So, I mean, nothing about her prior conduct would indicate to me that she's a traditional woman. Um, so she's making the claim here that she's a traditional woman, sort of, kind of, or at least she's talking about that. So um, I guess your guys' reaction to this clip... I mean, it sounds like how a, a lot of women have had to adapt to the wave of feminism that, and the economy stuff that's kind of pushed us into the workforce. And so I think what a lot of us are trying to communicate is we could switch. We could go one way or the other. Because I think, for the most part, women are starting to value emotional connection and, like, the sexual or romantic relationship, you could say, be with men more than money because so many of us are getting used to having to bring financial resources to the table. So I would say a lot of women, I would put myself in this category where I could switch. If I really was with a man who could afford the whole family and household thing and it worked for me to stay home and not be earning, then I could be fine with that and respect the position. But if I chose a man who needed me to make money, I could also do that. And I, I don't know, I just feel like that's kind of the modern, a lot of us are kind of like that. Like, we're not saying we don't like to be home or we're not willing, but most men these days couldn't afford, like, our full life with kids and all the whole thing. So that's just Can my... I add something? Like, I think that if you're not a traditional woman, you don't want a traditional man. Like, I would never stay home if my man provides me everything. Because if one day he so, wakes and that's up relevant. and... Yeah, 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 Desiree. Sorry. You got to shut up. You got to let people finish talking. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that if one day he wakes up and he says, okay, I'm done, you're like, you're alone and you don't have anything. I would rather be able to provide everything to my family or whatever and, and like, can decide. Because if, you, if you're not financial, uh, how do you say, like, stable, uh, you can make a lot of choices. You have to True. stay at True. his... It yeah. makes you more vulnerable yeah. to get stuck in a sort of a toxic dynamic if it goes that way. Yeah. Or even if your man passes away or something, yeah, God right. forbid. And I don't think that it's bad if you if you decide to stay home and you're... But having some sort of job skills is a... Yeah, so like it depends good. your your way <laughs> to sorry, see sorry things. Sorry to cut in, but Brian, check your, uh, check your messages from me here in a second here. Yeah. Nick, I think you got to boost the audio back up. May I add something? Mm -hmm. Or were you, were no, you still going? Not. Okay. Um, I think the first part of her video was a little bit misguided. Um, Where did you, she, Andrew, did you? She yeah. she has so. like a little oh. bit of the wrong idea of what a um, stay-at-home wife in reality, in the majority of, you know, stay-at-home moms and I'm what like, they do. 10 a.m., that would be nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> and especially if you have kids. Right. But um, she didn't mention kids, so stay-at-home wife. Um, but the first part of her video, a little bit misguided. Um, I do believe that marriage is, is or not marriage, I should say, but um, if you're, you have to be willing to be fluid, male, female, whatever, mostly as female, um, if you're going to be a stay-at-home wife, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you do have a job as well, you have to be able to balance all of that mm -hmm. And be what be the balance. Relationships like that are like balance. If if your if your man is the provider, you also he takes care of your exterior. You take care of his interior. Yeah. You know what I mean. You have to bring that balance. Or if your your life you're building together requires that you both work, then fit into that role. Yeah. You need to be able to be versatile. And it seems like it seems to me like because women have had to become so fluid, those of us who have children, whether we wanted the children or not, we end up with the children, and obviously we're all trying to do our best to raise the children that we have. So this fluidity of the gender role with women, I think what I'm noticing is the men are having a little bit of a hard time catching up because there's so many of us that are just kind of like, 
could do it all and they're still used to either a traditional woman or a progressive woman and I think they're kind of having a hard time deciding for themselves almost what type do I want or you know what I mean because I think they have fears with both types you hear the argument that the one side they're afraid of the gold digger women who just want to like live off them but then on the other side they're afraid of like the modern progressive woman who could yeah, just leave them true. at the drop of a hat so it's kind of like so I need to allow the rest of the panelists to answer this here but um just going back to you really quick mm -hmm. did you uh you said even if a man could fully provide for you yeah. you'd still want to work is that yeah correct so like you married let's say you you want to get married yeah let's say you married a guy who's making millions of dollars a year yeah still work yeah Okay. I, I don't know which work. Like maybe I would not put myself into like a twelve hours a day work, but right. yeah, I would definitely do still something. work. Okay. Yeah. What if he? Well, what if he wanted you to stay at home? I would say no. Do you want kids? Yeah. How many kids? Four. You want four kids? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a job? Uh yeah, but I think that you can figure it out in two. Like if I work and you work, we like we organize things. Mm -hmm. It's not so would you would you want him to pay for? He could certainly afford it, but would you want him to pay for daycare, mm. like a nanny, have somebody take care of the kids? Yeah, maybe while yes. you went out and worked. Or I I would pay for that. You said you're you're studying. Well, you went to uh, in Italy. Yeah, you got a degree in mechanical engineering. Yeah. I mean, so once you finish with, are you going to go get a PhD or what's your plan? I would like to do it. And then uh, once you enter the work, work once mm -hmm. you enter the workforce, how much money do you think you'll be making? I don't know. I hope a lot because I'm studying a lot to earn a lot and to be sure. like I I don't really like I've dated to like poor guys mm -hmm. and and the thing is that I I want to be like able to, to to date whoever I want because I connect with them and not like be in like a stress stress situation for the money so like I went to earn my money and then organize the family with with someone that it's not only about like the money you know mm -hmm. and who works I mean I would stay I would stay with someone that stays at home and I work so if you could pick between a guy who makes mm, let's say 50,000 US mm -hmm. dollars a year which means you're going to have to work too, mm. and you, you are going to have four kids also, or somebody who makes a million dollars a year and you'll never have to work, which do you pick? I would pick the one that I want to stay with. Like, if oh, I well, meet you got, someone... you got to pick one. Yeah, but you can say, like, in this way, if, because it's very, like... Uh, a mind thing, but I, all things, I all things I equal. I think is what he's saying. Like oh, you're equally I feel attracted. the same for the two. Yeah, they're both good men. Yeah, but of, mm, one of them, you're gonna have to work, and the other. I I think that I would choose the one where I I have to work because I have my financial like freedom. So like. But you guys are married, right? I don't care. It, that's not a point. Like a lot of people get separated, get divorced, get whatever. I I grew up in a family uh, where my parents were divorced. Uh -huh. The thing is that if you're married or not, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you, you obviously you you stay with your your wife or your husband, but it can ends whenever whenever. I mean, I don't know if that's like kind of European vision, but a lot of people... Do you intend to live in Italy? Like, uh, what's your... I, you want to stay here? Or you I would like to, to stay Italy? here, but I don't know if I'm going to okay. stay here all my life yeah. or I'm going to change it or go so back this, to let's Europe. Say that, but, I mean, in this situation, you do get divorced from a guy who makes millions of dollars. Mm. Your financial stabil stability is potentially arguably going to be better than your financial stability should you marry somebody who makes less than you. So let's say you go on to make $150,000. But I don't want to ask my to the other person. Like, if, if okay. our, our relationship ends or whatever, I don't want to ask money to the other. And okay, that's fair. Techno Trooper donated $200. Panel, what are the top professions you feel most drawn to in a partner when considering someone to marry or date? What about those careers makes them especially appealing to you? 
Uh, Techno Trooper, we'll come right back to that in just a moment, but uh, I'll pull that one back up. Okay, Techno. Uh, so, okay. Um, reaction to the clip that we saw? Oh, um, uh, I kind of started thinking about like other things, like listening to her, so, um, but, but like money wise, I mean, money is like a benefit for sure. I hope to make enough as well to be financially independent to where I don't. Uh, well, the, uh, the reiteration, just real quick, right? To, just the reiteration of the clip is if a man wants to have a woman who's going to be traditional and stay at home, then he needs to be in a position where she can do that by being a provider who can uh, provide enough to enable her to do that. Um, I mean, I think that I think you can be a traditional man without being there yet, like financially, like you can have tra traditional values and expectations. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. I mean, I kind of disagree, but I also think like traditional women probably want traditional men. Hmm. OK, your thoughts on the video? Um. I mean, I agree with her. I grew up in a traditional household, so my mom's a stay-at-home mom. My dad has provided since they were like 14 years old, so that's what I want to, but I also don't expect a guy that I meet to be fully there yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still young, and this is a different generation, so if that's just not possible I would be willing to work but sure I would like to be a stay-at-home mom your reaction to the video um well I feel like if you're a traditional man then you should be actively looking for a traditional woman I think um, men would probably like have expectations and they expect you to change with them um, me personally I prefer I would like a house husband that's what a partner I wouldn't look for because um what is that what is a house husband the roles are the roles have switched so, so you make the money he stays at home takes care of the kids basically yeah, basically take care of the kids take care of the home and do the cooking and cleaning because I don't I'd rather be like I don't want to stay at home and do that like I, I tried the traditional own way I was not happy whatsoever um I love science. I'd rather be in a lab doing research, and I want to just find a partner who's willing to stay home and take care of my home. Can you, uh, can you help me out with something real quick? Um, you, uh, you said that you love science. I'm also uh, a big fan of uh, science. Can you just tell me real quick um, what the scientific process is? Um, like the scientific method? Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, they're testing me on this, too. I guess... Ask a question, create a hypothesis, conduct an experiment, um, see if it's null or whatsoever, and then... Uh, it has to be repeatable. The results have to be repeatable. It has to be repeatable and testable, so... Yeah, well, close enough. <laughs> so you want a house husband? Yes. Okay, and... Um, and was this part of the conflict with you, you and your eight-year relationship, the sperm donor guy or whatever that you said? Um, actually, he was the one staying at home, taking care of everything. Um, oh, you had you had what she wanted. It was yeah. just toxic, remember? But they it couldn't, was very, very toxic. They couldn't even watch TV together. <laughs> oh, that's Come true. On. And that is true. Um, okay. Um, house husband. So and it was the you, right setup, wrong guy, kind of. Oh, right now I'm not working. I'm a full, um, full time student slash mom. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Um, you live with like parents or? No, I have my own spot. Oh, okay. But you're not working. <laughs> well, I have family and he housing doesn't pay at child the moment. Okay, but he pays child support. The or no, he doesn't pay child support. The sperm donor. No. Would he be upset if he heard you call him a sperm donor? I call him that all the time, no. To He's his okay. face? Yes. Like you're dropping off the kids, uh, yes. you fucking sperm donor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we get angry, yes, I call him that. I don't, but yes, I, I've told it to his face before. Um, I mean, I said a lot of mean things, so I feel kind of hmm. bad. Damn, all right. Um, your reaction to the 
Oh, I gave my. Oh, you already gave. I did have okay. a response to what. You're too far from the mic, by oh, the way. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Um, I did have a response to what she said about how something about how men are afraid to something about men having fear about like, what their woman wants or well, something. Well, like I, I think maybe they're having a hard time with the fluidity that women have found as far that as like it. being so, a prog being with a progressive yeah. woman versus a traditional. So I don't agree with that, and here's why: um, women have asked literally through feminism to take on the roles men already have women women were in the traditional role you know for for eons and just up until the last what 50 60 years right. they have wanted to take on more masculine roles like having right. a job outside the home and so i don't feel like men have a fear of that at all they're sitting back and looking like saying that okay here's what we're giving you rights we're giving you all these extra things well i just think that Let me women finish. in general gave Let a me mis finish. mixed message so in that in that respect women have literally asked to take on these extra things and men are sitting well, not back every woman let me finish so um so in that regard we're taking on these roles by choice we're taking on these extra things by choice and men are sitting back and saying okay you wanted this let's see you work i let's see you let's well, see well i it. think the real so problem you is have that got to stop interrupting honestly sorry i'm autistic i'm done um the way that I see it is that just because feminism posed itself as what every woman wanted, that's not the case. There were tons of women who were perfectly happy, me being one of them, perfectly happy with like the traditional whole life role of like getting married, having kids, raising the kids, being the same. What oh, my, are you I wanted fucking that. talking about? You absolutely hated it. You write all about it in your book. No, how much I only you hated the I only traditional hated lifestyle. It. You wanted to work in the worst way. You were totally oppressed by the patriarchy. You wrote an entire fucking book outlining this. It's because I was simply married, like in your case, right position, but wrong man. Like very, very wrong man. Mm -hmm. And so I had a very bad experience with it. You but now these women against this exact type of relationship and tell them that it's probably bad for them no, and to it's embrace not. their it's... like intersexual uh, hooker, basically, I, I right? Think, like I think that's what you advise them to do. I think you've misunderstood because you gave such a brief look through my book and just made your judgment. But what I was no, really expressing is that what I was really expressing was that I was never taught how to pick a healthy relationship. Therefore, when I got into the role that I believed I wanted, it felt completely wrong because I was with the completely wrong guy. That was more what I was getting at. And so part of my journey back to a more traditional Your journey? mindset <laughs> involved me going through the stent of feminism. Like, okay, let me see what these girls are talking about with this, that, all this craziness, freedom, liberation, all the way to come back around to my next book will be like my journey back to a more traditional um, Female or there is no tradition. Wait, there's no tradition here. What do you mean? You're you you're an OnlyFans sex worker. You're that you're not. Tra they, by no means have you circled back I'm to a, a traditional I'm a, role. I'm a stay-at-home homeschool mom of three kids. That's as traditional as I can be right now. I don't have a husband. What, what is, well, okay, so what does traditional mean? Does that just mean a man goes and works while you stay the fuck home? Is that all you think traditional is? Or is there a set no, of values I, with that? I think it means prioritizing um, home economics and raising children if you have them. So, so then it doesn't mean shit. So all it means is a woman stays home and she watches the kids and the man goes out and works. That's all you think traditional is. No, I believe it's the it's the general submission of the woman and the general leadership and dominance of the man, if there was one. In my case, I don't have one. So that part of the tradition is not in, in my life right now. Every non-traditional relationship on planet Earth can have all women submitting to men, all of them. And it would still be as far from traditional as you can imagine. They could do something like, five, I don't know, uh, all the women go out and work, and the man stays home, and the woman still submits to him, right? Like, all of the criteria that you just laid out for traditional, from it just sounds like gobbledygook to me. Like, there has to be some value set that we're looking for, that we're leaning I towards for I'm, why we're doing I'm this, speaking right? from, I'm not speaking from, like, a capitalistic, domestic 
business partnership. I'm talking about like an agape love, like soul connection with another human where you're both in it to win it with each other, a ride or die. Like, so basically we can switch in and out of roles depending on the season we're each going through. So for example, well, if I just, though? if, well, maybe, maybe it's not then, maybe it's a blend, maybe it's a, a more, it sounds Not like complete. just typical it's, it's a modernism. Bridge. It's a it bridge. literally just sounds like modernism to me. Just, like okay. traditionalism, well, the idea of traditionalism is, is historically a thing, an experiment which worked. And so you're moving back towards whatever this thing was that worked because it's better than whatever the current thing is. Well, because we've evolved, working. Andrew. So we no longer live in a social construct that's going to support traditional traditionalism, if you want to call it that. Yep, of course we um, do. It's not going to work are, anymore. Yeah, it it, well, it so won't work anymore. We've simply evolved no, too you're far. Wrong. We haven't evolved as a society. Anything. Not only that, people are people are desperate to get back to some sense of what you call traditionalism by your own admission, including you. So the thing is, is like, no, I don't think we've evolved past shit. And not only that, uh, you know, just to give my take. The woman in the video uh, is just a typical kind of selfish woman. So her idea here, it all starts with this false supposition of the word fair. All this entire worldview revolves around this idea of fairness. Life's not fair. Relationships aren't fair. Marriages aren't fair. They, they're, it, when you're talking about equally yoked, that means something completely different than who does the dishes on Thursday. That has nothing to do with any of that. Um, what you're looking at inside of one of these relationships should not be the idea of fair. It should be the idea of what works best for your family. And... What's so always fluidity. Going, so fluidity. Hang, hang you need to be fluid for Desiree. the family. Let me finish, Desiree. It's okay, Desiree. Just let me finish real quick. What works best for your family dynamic? And so the traditionalists are saying what works best for society and the family dynamic is to have women stay at home, to raise the kids, not in laboratories. And the reason they don't want women in laboratories is because then they have to outsource the child care. So I want the smartest women at home raising the next generation of so really smart I'm doing. kids, right? That's what I want. That so would, that's that what would I'm doing. That would make a lot more sense than wasting their potential and breeding yep. years that's what I'm doing. on having them in a, in a job that a man can do. So the idea here is that the traditionalist movement is saying modernity is screwed up with the, our priority set because women have become extremely self-centered around this idea of fair when in fact there is nothing fair we don't have to sign up for a draft for instance that's not fair women are not the people who have to defend you while you sleep that's not fair all sorts of things which aren't fair but yet for some reason men are able to deal with it and women don't seem to be able to deal with it are you done mm -hmm. so a couple things first of all i was enlisted to go into the US military, but I got pregnant and I had to sign a military discharge. So I was fine as a woman going into the military. Just a caveat. Yes, but so I will say that draft, it sounds right? to me, it sounds to me like by your definition, I am actually a traditional woman because I have made many sacrifices to figure out a way to still be a stay-at-home mom and a homeschool mom at that of my three kids and not work outside the home. I figured out a home business that I could do that made enough money with me only working a few hours a week. And by the way, that's not making new content because I have tons and tons of content from when the kids used to go to their dads every weekend. So they were never around any of that. It's, it's no different than how you made your online courses. Now it's there and all you have to do is promotions basically. Same for me. So. Judge it all you want. That was what worked for me. That was like the supply and demand. I tried to do like the online coaching thing, writing books, really the whole thing, and nobody mean, was going I, for it. I so. really don't think that what we mean when we say traditional lifestyle is your mom stays home because she can also engage in prostitution. I don't think that that is traditional. I don't think by anybody's metric that would ever be considered traditional, Desiree, ever. And so the thing is, is I'm not even trying to beat you up about it. I'm just telling you, like, how would that ever fit a metric for traditional? We want the best and brightest to stay at home and take care of their kids instead of being in a lab, not hookers, right? That's not what we're after. Like, maybe the hookers should outsource the child care. So could you, could you tell me a better way that I could make 
let's say $6,000 a month and only work a couple hours a week because I have to full-time take care well, of three kids. I would do instead. What should I yeah. do? Well, of course, there's there's tons of other better ways that you could have like spent what? your time Can to you make know, 6, I mean, I'm 000. curious. Hang on, hang on. Stop, Des. Let me answer your question. So the first supposition here is that you must make $6,000 a week. Why must you? Because that's how much my cost of living is. Oh, okay. So you can't downgrade? There's no way. I live in Southern California. I, I live in Southern California. My rent alone is $2,700. Wait, wait. I just want to make sure I got this right. Southern California costs $24,000 a month to live in, huh? No. Twenty-four thousand. I said you six thousand. You said six thousand a week. No, six thousand a month. Week. A month, honey. Yeah, a month. Make six thousand dollars a month in Southern California, working an entry-level job, Desiree. But then, who's going to watch the kids? Who's going to homeschool my kids? Yep, yeah, you're in that case because you're a single mom. You're going to have to outsource that. There's no choice there. But why? But. I don't want to. I would rather have a bad reputation with guys like you and raise my own kids. I don't give a shit what you think. Yeah, and so many, many so, men so, so have grace saying, though, and understanding so, for my choices because they this understand. This is my point. You're making my point for me, right? Which is, okay, so what you say is, look, I'm actually just prostituting myself for the kids, right? Because I want to be able to stay at home with the kids. Yet I would counter and say, okay, but the integrity is is absolutely compromised. Your children are never going to thank you later. They're never going to be like, you know, mom. My kids are not raised a, in a like a in a puritanical like it's not sex puritanical. negative type of culture. They're going to get to the age this of reason. This is a totally different They're generation, the Andrew. They're reason. not sexually repressed like your generation is. They're cool. Oh, yeah, like the women They're in the 70s were so sexually repressed. <laughs> Tell me another fucking bullshit lie. They weren't sexually repressed at all. Boomers weren't sexually repressed. That's all nonsense. Overly sexualized generation, in fact. The thing is, is that this is the first generation, the Zoomers, where we see pushback towards this type of sexualization for once, finally. And if you think that your kids won't hit the age of reason and go, you know, mom, I think that there might have been. They're better there. Fucking they're going ways. through two of the two older ones are going through puberty. So they're kind of at that questioning everything. And this, no, this they're right not at wrong. it yet. But when they're in their 20s, okay, well, you're going to have some I, to do. I yes. believe that my relationship with my children is is strong enough such that even if they had looked back and had an issue with what I was doing, I don't think it would be any bigger of an issue than any any person who comes of age and starts judging what their parent did. I don't think it will be. In fact, I can say for sure, it's not going to be worse than my evaluation of my parents. I'll tell you that. So at least Look, I'm like all, doing listen, a little bit listen, better. Not all choices, not all choices when you fuck something up are optimal choices. So for instance, if you are in a marriage and you choose to end the marriage because, like you said in your book, you're not feeling like fucking like you're an amazing queen or whatever. Um, because, so the marriage because is because I was so under I was under CPS order basically to leave my mm -hmm. marriage or I would get my kids taken away as an yeah. accomplice so, to my anyway. Ex. So 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 whatever the circumstances are, you end up with a divorce. Okay, so when you end up with a divorce. Now you're in an immediate unopt or unoptimal situation, which is, okay, now we either have to split custody or one of us has full custody. You have a whole battle that you have to do around that. So now you don't have optimal choices at this point, okay? But there's still better choices to be had, I think, than posting up pictures of you with jizz on your face. That, I think that there's better decisions which could be made than that, honestly, Desiree. And the thing is, is like, fine, you can say, no, you know, Andrew, but... That what this has done is it's allowed me to have enough money to do A, B, C, and D. But that's all shit for you. You just love the fucking attention. You're not doing this shit because of your kids. You do it because you love the fucking attention. You just love it. It's your favorite. And I think that you should just stop coping and be honest about it. May I add something? May I add something? Go ahead. Um, so some other options. I, I, my kids are 19 uh, going on 20 and 16 going on 17. Back when they were young, both of them, I was uh, lucky enough and um, we were able to pr um, provide for the households so that I could be a stay-at-home mom for a few years while they were little. During that time, I didn't work. During that time, I found other pursuits that were maintaining of my self-respect and my dignity and this respect of my family members and friends. 
I started a business and ran that business from home where I was a seamstress. I made clothes, I made uh, prom dresses for underprivileged females in high school, and I did you know, alterations, fully made clothes. That was a fully sustainable business for me, and it provided extra income for the family, not for myself, but for my family, and helping raising my kids. And that is something that I feel is an alternative. Use your skill, and Unfortunately, I'm not I, done. Okay. So, in the second time, when my son was born, and he was until the age of two, I was able to uh, sit down and put words on paper, and, and I have yet to put that into actual publishing, so I have a book waiting to be put out. So there's that on the table. And right now, even though I'm working full time, I'm not a stay-at-home mom, I'm looking into starting another business and doing you know, like organic skincare stuff like that. So those are all those are all respectable things. So I, I actually no had careers. I had side hustles yeah, doing hurt. all that, but what are the top hey, professions you Desiree, feel most up. drawn to in a partner when considering someone to marry or date? What about those careers makes them especially appealing to you? Is that a repeat? What? Is that a repeat? It was from before. We didn't we didn't answer it. I told them we'd come back to it. So what are the top professions you feel most drawn to in a partner when considering someone to date? Or Mary, go ahead. Um, mine would be entrepreneurship and specifically in social media, like social media marketing, basically, social media presence. Okay. And what about you? Uh, I think psychology is a great skill that I would value a lot. So like a therapist or anything that has a psychology degree. You sure about that one? Oh, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I mean... Uh, I mean, money is good, wanna, too, but... You want to date a therapist so you can tell them all your problems? <laughs> well, hopefully I'm, like... So you can get, like, not. free therapy, basically? Hopefully, well, I just think they're, like, more emotionally in tuned. Are they? Well, they should be. Why is that? Because if you're a therapist, I think you should... Well, you should have more skills than the average person. Desiree, aren't you a therapist? Yeah, and it's... It's an odd thing because, to be honest with you, we get very almost calloused because we hear mm -hmm. so many crazy things. So in a lot of ways, we start to almost lack empathy because we hear it over and over the most horrific things. So that's why a lot of people think I'm literally like a narcissist or a psychopath or something. Here, Desiree, because, just one correction. Yeah. So I know she's sitting right next to you, yeah. but like the way the camera oh, angles work, sorry. Just talk straight, straight, yeah. keep your head straight into the mic. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's not what people would think when you are in a clinical setting or in, in any sort of setting where people are coming and telling you like their deepest traumas or confessing to you things that they have done, especially after 10, 15, 20 years of that, as I did in church counseling and all this stuff. Um, and now even in on, doing OnlyFans, a lot of my chats are people... I'm sorry, kind I have of, to interrupt you. Psychology is a soft science. What a great use of four years to, de to get a degree to be a receptionist. Desiree, I, on one hand, like, you don't need to quip every single time. Like, sometimes you can just not quip? equip. Oh. Like, you're just throwing, like, you're, you have to add on after everything, every time somebody says something. You don't got to do that. Okay. Because this show will go way too long. If I have to go to her, then you have to say a statement. I go to her, you do a little quip. I go to her, you got to make a statement about it. I go to Morgan, you make a statement. Just keep it pertinent. You don't got to like, you've been talking for 30 minutes. You've talked more than she has, and it's her thing. Okay. Just like, it's just let my, people it's talk. It's just my autism. So I, like, when I'm yeah, that's passionate cope. about that's something. That's cope. People who are autistic don't have to like constantly be like, let me, let me be the center of attention and add on to what everybody else is saying. Well, it's well just, it, what it does asked. is it triggers it triggers my autism. So if you can keep your autism under control, so that I can keep my autism under control, yeah, that would be fantastic. It also triggers my autism. I told her yeah, to pinch triggers, me. Triggers I'm our autism. It triggers everybody's autism when you're being autistic. Anybody. So if you could just oh, dial my that autism back. is going out of control right now. Okay. Uh, 